So it's been a wonderful journey making, uh, making this competition. You can see the images on the video monitors as you go for a coffee in the room there. I lived in England and there it's always cloudy and if it isn't cloudy the, the sky is yellow because of the street lights so you could hardly see the sky from where I used to live so I was interested in it from an academic point of view I used to read books that had ast astronomical pictures in it but it didn't apply to my everyday life because I couldn't see anything apart from the sun and the moon. My first photograph was taken in Paris when I was a very young man and I, and, uh, I fell in love with Paris through the photographs because it's such a photogenic city. I didn't start taking astrophotographs until 1975 when I joined the Anglo-Australian Observatory. I can't honestly remember what was the first image I made. But don't forget I was employed to do science. Uh, I ended up making uh, lots of colour pictures which are kind of theatre for the, for the stars. Uh, but the first scientific thing I got involved in was making a photographic mosaic of the large Magellanic Cloud using plates from the UK Schmidt telescope. These photographic days the prints were, were stuck together uh, in a way uh, that was as seamless as possible but it wasn't as perfect as you can now do digitally. So the, the large Magellanic Cloud was the first thing uh, I made a photograph of. I used to work for a company that made uh, inks and dye stuffs and pigments and things of that kind and one of the printing processes I heard of in this company was the use of an unsharp mask to uh, make the yellow, magenta and cyan layers of uh, a printing press that the printing plates for making colour pictures line up so that the shadows and the highlights were the same colour, there were no colour differences. Unsharp masking was used for that. It also had the effect of sharpening pictures. Uh, but when I eventually started making pictures using not yellow, magenta and cyan, but red, green and blue, additive colour mixing, uh, I was able to use that process uh, then to, to achieve the same kind of effect, to make the images sharper uh, and to equalise the colour differences between the plates I was using. The originals were on plates, they had to be copied uh, into film and then finally made uh, paper prints and it was the paper prints I used to to stick together. But of course there's a problem when you do this. The sky is curved essentially and when you have flat plates uh, uh, you run into problems with how you, how you join them, how you trim them to join them and if you trim them properly then you get a curved collection of photographs which is very difficult to handle. Normally, when you take photographs with a telescope like the Anglo-Australian telescope, you sit inside a tube at the end of the telescope, looking after things, changing filters and so on. But with a six-hour exposure, it was much simpler for me to set things up uh, and then close the shutter and have the telescope slew down to the ground. I climb out of it, it goes back, we can automatically open the shutter from the ground and begin the exposure. And then the autoguider uh, guides the telescope on the stars for six hours. My scientific work, for me, was the main thing. Um, I'm interested in galaxies uh, and very early on in my career when I began to apply these odd photographic techniques to existing plates I discovered that some galaxies had very very faint shells around them uh, and uh, they were very important, they turned out to be very important because they were indicators of uh, merging activities that had occurred long ago and by measuring uh, the distance of the centre of the galaxy of the shells uh, you can work out a time frame for this and get some idea of when things occur and exactly what the physics was of the merger of these two galaxies maybe some billions of years ago. And then I discovered a uniquely faint galaxy, a tiny little smudge, a sort of thumbprint on the glass negative. But it turned out the biggest galaxy known, it still is the biggest galaxy known, many hundreds of times larger than the Milky Way. But the strange thing about the galaxy is that it's, it's very easily detectable by radio telescopes because it's full of hydrogen, but that, that hydrogen hasn't made many stars. So it's very, a faint, very faint galaxy. It's called Malin 1 now. I think it was sometime late in 1997. Uh, it was a very funny feeling because um, I developed so many interesting methods and taken so many plates on the telescope. I knew this was going to be the last one because we, Kodak had stopped making the only plates that we could use. And so as I processed it in the darkroom that night, listening to the machinery as the plate was moved around over the developer and the smell of the fixer in my, no my nose, I was very emotional because uh, it really was the end of an era. Um, and I still feel emotional about it because my skills are, are in direct photography. But I'm very pleased to say that I'm now I'm completely digital, everything I do is digital. The digital age has transformed not only everybody's photography, everybody has a digital camera, easy to go click. 
but it's also transformed astronomy uh, in a way that uh, people who uh, have a digital camera can photograph the sky in a way they never could on colour film. This has been a fantastic competition, the uh, Starmus astrophotography competition. We received about 260 entries. Uh, most of them still pictures, and the still pictures were of a very high order. The most exciting uh, part of this, though, was judging the movie part of it, the animations. And the animation was the main winner uh, from this, about a three-minute sequence of stars moving across the sky with clouds and the ocean moving as well. It was a seaside shot, uh, or a series of seaside shots, uh, taken by Alex Cherney, who is an Australian, happily. Since we're here at this fantastic Starmus conference celebrating uh, space flight amongst many other things, the, most th the thing I'd really like to do is travel on the space shuttle. I really would like to go into Earth orbit for a while. That would be a most marvellous thing to do.